Hi, I'm Alex. I'm one of the corporate system engineers, and today I'm going to be taking a look at importing lunar terrain uh, using publicly available information uh, files. So just to start, I have a normal scenario and SDK pulled up here. So I've got Shackleton Crater, uh, which is a location on the south pole of the moon, already inserted. But what we're going to do first is just come over here to our 3D graphics window, and we're going to click this purple globe, and we're going to go and make our central body the moon. So what this does is instead of looking at the Earth, we're now looking at the moon. So I'm going to get rid of the 2D graphics window. I don't need it right now. Maximize my 3D graphics window. So the publicly available data that I'm referring to is that of the NASA Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter. Um, so SDK will take PDS files from any other planet and we'll be able to use them for terrain on that planet. So I'm going to go to just Edge, Microsoft Edge. I'm going to go to imbrium.mit.edu. Uh, so Lola was one of the sensors that recorded PDS data from the LRO. So this information is publicly available at a pretty high resolution. And so we're going to browse here. We can either do Lola underscore GDR, which is polar stereographic data specifically, or we can use SLDEM 2015, uh, which will show us anything that isn't the poles, essentially. Just for this example, I'm going to click on Lola underscore GDR. Here we have the option to choose the North Pole or the South Pole. I'm going to choose the South Pole. And then we have a lot of different resolutions. So 100 meters a pixel is obviously going to be better than 400 meters per pixel. For this example, I'll pick the 100 meter per pixel. And I'm going to use just the image and the LBL. So it's important that we get both of these files. The image file contains the data that is actually going to show the topography, uh, that describes the landscape, while the LBL file tells STK what to get the data from. Now, this is going to take a really long time to download. This is a lot of data. Uh, the image file in particular generally is about one and a half gigs all the way up to about 10 gigs, depending on what the range of your latitude and longitude is. So I'm just going to cancel these. I already have them in there. So if I come back to STK, what I'm going to want to do first is go to my scenario properties and go to basic and terrain. So from here, I'm going to change the central body to the moon instead of the Earth. I come over here. You can see I already have this LBL in my custom analysis terrain sources. But say I wanted to add it again. I could go to Add, and it's going to be in my Downloads folder. So if I navigate to Downloads, you want to make sure that you change the Files of Type option to .lbl, so MOLA Terrain. And you can see that when I downloaded it just now, this option isn't, this is fully downloaded because it's just the LBL, uh, but it won't refer to the right image. So instead, I can use this one here which I added last week, and this is a file that's currently in here, and I would just hit open. Now, odds are the LBL is going to be in the slightly wrong format for SDK. So what you might have to do is navigate to that LBL file, and what we're going to do is we're going to open it with some sort of text editor. So I'm going to edit it with Notepad++. And so there are two things that SDK is going to look for that aren't typically what shows up in an LBL, um, and it is the case that they don't show up in these files from imbrium.mit. So what we're going to have to do, we're going to have to scroll down all the way to coordinate system name. So that's line 102 in this file. Currently it's set to mean earth polar axis of DE421. This is very similar to what we want. Uh, what we actually want is going to be planetocentric. Mean earth and polar axis of DE421 actually use the same origin as planetocentric and SDK is just looking for planetocentric, the text. So they actually will end up with the same locations, the same uh, coordinate system. We just have to change this text, otherwise SDK won't validate it. So here I'm just going to change this to all caps planet o centric. So it comes up here, it's an option. And then I'm just going to save that file. I should be good to go. I can now use this back in my terrain properties here. So once you've done that, you've added it to terrain, this won't actually be used for analysis actually needs to be converted into a .pdtt file. So I can exit out of my scenario properties and come up to utilities. And from there I can go to imagery and terrain converter and then terrain region. So again I have to change my central body to the moon in this case. And automatic selection is what comes up as terrain source. Automatic selection will automatically use that .lbl file that you downloaded and it put into your terrain properties and the scenario properties. So from here, I'm just going to give it some output location. The default is the central body's 
folder under SDK 12, under the config file, uh, this is absolutely fine. Um, we can just find it later. So just remember where that directory is. The file name, I can just put moon data. And delete intermediate terrain file, it's absolutely fine. We're not going to need that. It's just used for conversion. So from here, normally I would click convert. This process takes quite a long time. Uh, with a 1.5 gigabyte image file, it took about three hours. Once this terrain is converted, we can go back to the scenario properties, basic and then terrain. And under our central body moon, we can hit add. And we'll actually be able to navigate to grab, so if we click AGI terrain file as our file type, we would actually be able to navigate to the folder in which we saved our converted file. So that's usually uh, my documents, SDK 12 in this case, because that's the version that I'm using. And then the config folder, central bodies, moon, geodata, and then eventually I could get all the way to the file that I made, data moon, moon data, whatever you named it. So this .pdtt file is the one that will allow us to visualize the terrain, but will also allow us to use it for analysis. Once we've added that .pdtt file from our terrain properties, we can go to the globe manager. So to pull up the globe manager, we're just going to click this globe manager button in our 3D objects window. We're going to click on moon, and then we're going to click add terrain slash imagery. From here, we can browse. We're going to go back to that config file, so your SDK documents folder, config, central bodies, moon, geodata, and then we have the .pdtt file. So we can enable this, and that will actually allow us to visualize our terrain within our scenario. So again, I already have this in here, and I have the South Pole. So one of the craters I know is at the South Pole is Shackleton Crater. So I can zoom to Shackleton Crater, and I now see that I have this lunar terrain that allows for analysis with lighting, it allows for analysis with access, and can be really useful in creating ground facilities. Say I wanted to see how much light a location on the moon gets in a year. Uh, I can now compute that using this terrain data that I found online, it's completely free, and using the uh, terrain converter to create this .pdtt file that is now usable in my scenarios. That's all for today. Thanks for watching.